<laughs> All right. Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Devin Yanko before the 2016 Western States 100. How are you, Devin? I'm doing great. How are you? All right. Um, it's been, it had been a very long time since you'd run 100 miles. Yes, it had been. Five years? Uh, since I finished? Or no, since I started? started. <laughs> uh, 2010 was the last time I yeah. started one. We were probably right about here. Uh, yeah, we're five... actually on my deck at the same place okay. I'm staying now. <laughs> gotcha. Six years ago, that one didn't go well. No, it went terrible. Yeah, what happened there? I mean, generally speaking. Um, I was unprepared, I think, mostly mentally, mm -hmm. to weather the highs and lows. And I had heaped so much expectation on myself that, like, when something went like totally sideways, it was like catastrophic and I didn't know how to rebound from that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it just. And, and what was the long gap? Like why the long gap before another hundred? I mean, I know you, you know, started the business and all that. Well, I mean, after, so after that, I just, I think I went into that with the wrong motivation. Like I did my first hundred because it's like the natural progression, right? I did Vermont 100 in 2008. And then I didn't do another one because I was like not sure that it was really my jam. Mm -hmm. um, and then when things went wrong at Western States, it was kind of like, I needed to reevaluate like why I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very steadfast that I wouldn't do another one until I really was like excited about it. Um, and then after that, I actually focused on qualifying for the Olympic trials and, you know, kind of went to that end of my speed because yeah. I had never really explored that potential. So I went and to And you the, did, other, did other road stuff, yeah. like, you know, yeah, comrades. I, yeah, I mean, I did, com <laughs> like, I had an amazing year in 2012. Like, I was third at Two Oceans. Um, I was fifth at Comrades. Like, I was, I ran a PR in the marathon at the Olympic trials, set a, like, course record at Napa Valley Marathon, like, right out, like, a month later. Like, mm -hmm. and then the beginning of 2013, like, I started out with Chuck and Nat, and I was like, we're going, like this is gonna be a great year, you know? And then we started, we actually unexpectedly opened the business a lot sooner than we had thought. Mm -hmm. So at that point, so spring of 2013, like ultras were just, I couldn't fit in my brain. I could do marathons, but it was mostly like, cause I wanted a day off and like running a marathon was like a good reason to do that. Mm -hmm. And over about like those two years, um, we were just working so hard, you know, 80, 100 hour weeks, like, Running was a great escape from that and great balance, but I just, I really wasn't, I could see that in the marathon, like no matter how good of training I did, like on the day I could run, I literally ran a couple of marathons with, with, that were within seconds of each other and like totally different fitness, totally mm -hmm. different courses. So I was like, it was just a break. Um, and I was on the night shift um, for a really long time, which is super not conducive, you know? And we just didn't have the personnel to like let us out of that. So. Um, finally, fall of last year, I just was like, I need to, I was burnt out on the whole marathon thing. I decided like the trial, I wasn't really sure about the trial, doing the trials again for mm -hmm. the marathon. I think I had wanted to do that because now all ultra runners did it. It was like the thing to do in 2012. I did it and nobody cared. Um, so I actually stopped being on the night shift and I took a trip to South Africa um, and I did ultra trail Cape Town, mm -hmm. 100K, totally unprepared for it. And it was like, we went from summer in California to like winter down there Gotcha. and it was pouring rain and cold and all the stuff but it was like such an experience in which I just didn't quit mm -hmm. and it set me up for a mentality of like starting to become curious about 100 mile again with that mentality of like I went through a lot of things in that race like now almost, did you go into it thinking that might be the case like it that you know toughen you up or that it would be tough in that way or did you just go to have a fun run on the trails in South Africa I mean I went for a fun run and in South Africa. There was a part of me before that that was like, if I'm not off the night shift, I'm just going to go to South Africa and never come back. <laughs> but luckily that didn't happen. Um, and I, it was just, I love Cape Town and I got into the trail community down there. And so like, I just really wanted, to, I've done, you know, two oceans, which goes around the mountain. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really just wanted to be on those trails and experience it that way. And it just so happens that it was like a like the entire three weeks I was there, it was like this you know, beautiful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then race day was just terrible, freezing, you know, pouring rain. And I didn't really go in with expectations. Like I went in, like I have this <laughs> chance to do this race. Uh, and I really wasn't thinking beyond that, you know, in the way I have in the past where I always have the next thing. Um, but there just was this distinct moment where I just decided not to quit. 
and it like really changed, like it changed everything in that race, right? Like it wasn't going well, I wasn't mm -hmm. having a good time, but like I just took that off the table. It's like there was nothing really wrong. I just was like, that's not an option anymore. And to have that mental, like that mental moment, it was kind of an evolution in like my own understanding of what I'm capable to do mentally in a race and how you can turn things around. Um, so do you think that was more important for you taking the steps toward Western states than saying have a really good hundred at Havelina, like not that much later? Well, I mean, I think it's that, that is why I decided to at Havelina. Cause I, and I said this to my coach when he's like, do you feel like you're like mentally prepared to do a hundred? And I said, I've never been more prepared in my life. And I really felt that way because when things came up at Havelina, like everybody looks at that race and they're like, you ran so fast. It must've been so easy. It's just, and it's like, no, you're running around the desert. Like, <laughs> for a really long time in loops. And it's it's a hard course to master, like you to get it right, to run that kind of race mm -hmm. is very hard. And, but I came in with a mentality of like this, we came up with this idea of working the problem. And that in, when you look at it that way, you stop having this kind of like things that happen are catastrophes. You're mm -hmm. like, no, I sat down for like 10 minutes on two different loops during that race. And I still ran what I did. And it was like, if I had been in my previous mindset, like, it would have been game over. Right? End of the world. End of the world, I would have dropped, I would have whatever, but I have I learned through that race, and then to have such a great performance there in spite of those things, that after that race, it was like, I'm ready to go back to Western States, because I had never felt like, I've been here most years, mm -hmm. and, or avoided being here most years, <laughs> like, because I just, I, I didn't feel it, like it was just not genuine, and this year it was really genuine, and I put in for the lottery, I kind of felt like, oh, eventually, you know, I'll put in, and then, because I'm ready now, someday, you know, seven years from now, I'll get in, <laughs> and when I didn't obviously get in that, with the, uh, through the lottery, like I tried to let it go, like I was like, oh, it's fine, you know, I'm gonna go, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to Comrades, I'm gonna go to Scotland and do this race, it just really gnawed at me, like, I couldn't let it go. Like I just, it was like, this is the time to do it. Gotcha. Um, so I, you know, totally took a left-hand turn and I went to Sean O'Brien, like with no specific training and did And that. got your spot. And got my spot. And, and then, that was also a hard race. Like the first 40 miles, I was totally in my head and totally in a bad place and totally like, Havelina was a fluke. I'm terrible. This is not going to happen. You know, all this stuff. And I learned through that. Like, and then I, with 20 miles to go, I just flipped the switch and, had fun. Crushed it. <laughs> I, nice. had lot, I had a lot of fun. Good, good. And another good run on American River. And then you decide not to do Comrade. Like, when was the decision? Because you were in, you've had a great run there before. It was pretty early on. Um, just because, well, I was supposed to go to South Africa in March um, for two oceans. I was actually going to do, I actually really disappointed one of my friends because we were doing this partner race, kind of like Trans Rockies, a three-day race. I was going to stay for three weeks mm -hmm. and do two oceans. And I got really sick. I got a car accident and I got really sick again. And so I couldn't do that. Um, and so that's why I ended up doing American River. Mm -hmm. But it was like right in there that I was like, I'm trying to do everything right to set myself up for success at Western States. And if I do comrades, like I want to do well at comrades too. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I can't, at least my first go, like I don't think that I can do both well. And I didn't want, I want my, I just wanted to put everything into this um, and not, you know, just be like, oh, well, you know, things go, you know, sideways that I'm like, oh, well, I just did comrades and let give myself that out. I just There's didn't. really, that's easy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like maybe in the future I will want to do the double, but I, I like, I think they're both such big deals on their own. Like it's really, like it's amazing the people who have done both, but it's just, that felt like too much on my plate. So, and my coach was like, yeah, with all the travel and everything else. And I, I really suffered when I went to Scotland, like had really bad jet lag. So it was kind of like, it's just... <laughs> Clear, just clear the docket. So no jet lag here, because you've been in Tahoe for a month. Yes. Now, how did that happen? Because obviously, you know, there's still the, the bakery. bakery. Um, I have a really amazing husband. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, honey. Um, well, so I've been off the night shift since before I went to South Africa last fall. Mm -hmm. um, so my role has basically been doing my, like actually running the business side, um, which I was doing and baking, which is where the whole 80 to 100 hours thing came in. Um, so it just allows a lot more flexibility. I don't have to be on site. Mm -hmm. um, we have amazing staff. Um, our front house manager is such a rock star. Like there's just, we built, I mean, we just celebrated three years on Memorial Day. So it's like, 
we just built it in a way that it allows me to have that space. Like I still have to deal with things, but um, I can do my work from here. Mm -hmm. um, and my friend Thomas Reese, who's done this race a bunch of times, he has a house over there and he was really generous to let me stay there. So it was just one of those things where I was like, I feel like I needed the space mentally. I haven't had a lot of that space mentally to get focused on a race. Um, and so even more than physically, like, yeah, it's been nice to be able to be at altitude and, you know, heat trained all these things, mm -hmm. but it gave me the space to say, like, I'm getting my head right for this race because that I think is the biggest part for me. Um, do you think it also, I mean, consciously or unconsciously is even more buy-in and that you've taken that time, like dedicated it to yourself and yeah. this race? It's interesting because I thought about that. I was like, Oh, I'm gonna put so much pressure on myself, but you know, honestly, I have just gotten to a, a place where I'm like, it's been such an interesting journey of what I've kind of, from the beginning of this year, like where I felt like I was just in my own personal space to like where I am today and feeling just like a lot of gratitude and really excited to be here. And also not really having like an attachment on the outcome. Like I don't, there's so many sets of circumstances that like I just, I know that running a hundred miles and like putting it together is more than like everybody's fit. Everybody's done the little things, right? Like it doesn't, mm -hmm. that's not what it's about. So for me, I'm just like looking at this time and being like, that was a gift. And it's, you know, it's just made me kind of arrive like happy and excited. And I'm not, I don't feel nervous. I just feel like this can be a journey and it's going to be really fucking hard. <laughs> and that's like, that's awesome. And um, so I, you know, in the end, I'm glad it worked out that way. You mm -hmm. know, I was nervous, like, oh, what if I just, I'm gonna be like, but I put all of this in it. It's like, you know what? That, that has nothing to do with, one doesn't have anything to do yeah. with the other. Now, I mean, having known you for a long time, there's a little bit of- 10 years! <laughs> there's a little bit of like intense in that, intensity in your personality. Yes. Like, now, are you gonna be all bubbles and unicorns on the course, or is there gonna be times when you hit that like, you know, like oh. difficult, you know, oh, like- no. You should, I mean, I don't know if you watch Billy Yang's video of me at Sean O'Brien. I am like the most fun person ever to film because I'm super transparent and I, I am not rainbows and unicorns all the time. Like I just, it's not, it's not who I am and I'm sure there'll be times. And then there's like two film crews that are gonna be, you know, catching every detail of how I feel. And I don't have an unreasonable expectation that how I feel at this moment, like, a deep sense of calm is gonna radiate through me the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been out running in the canyons, like, multiple times, like, it sucks. Like, it's gonna suck, right? I'm not gonna come out of there like, <laughs> hey! Like, if I do, wow, then I'm having a really great day. <laughs> no, you're still gonna be able to like, yeah, like, sort of smash up against that wall and push through it, yeah. like. I mean, at Havelina, that's what I realized is that like, the Ultra Live had caught me very animatedly, like, live like coming in being like, I'm done, I'm out of here. Like, this is horrible, right? They totally, yeah, the whole world got to see that. And so I know that those moments are gonna come, but at the same time, I never, like at this point, I don't take it as seriously mm -hmm. as I did before. Um, and one of the things that has been really important for my own evolution, like with this race as kind of a catalyst for is just not really being as hard on myself, like not assigning more meaning than like, you know, if I'm having a hard time, it's not because I'm a bad person. And if I don't do well, like I, I don't have this like, you know, worthiness tied up in that. And I think that's just, you know, me having that self work and the time, you know, when I was, the last time I did this, I mean, I was very young coming into this mm -hmm. sport and I just don't think that I had the tools to understand that, like I was definitely hustling for my worthiness, like in the community, like I wanted to prove like Western States is it, right? Like it's like for marathoners running Boston, like mm -hmm. that's the question, right? And I just wanted to prove myself in a way that now I don't, I don't really care, right? So <laughs> say you're going up devil's thumb, it's 105, you start to get like nauseous, yeah. like what are you doing? Like, well, I have a friend, a bear friend. Every time I've gone up in the last three, <laughs> four weeks, I have a bear who's hanging out there. So I've, I felt that way. Like I, the last time that's where it went sideways. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I distinctly remember like the panic and it's like for now, like this time it's like, so that starts happening. It's like work the problem, like figure out, like take the time. Like last time I was afraid to stop at the aid station and have some popsicles and have a Those stick. popsicles are really good. They are so good. <laughs> I have so many, I have, that's like all my crew. It's like, just 
chest full of uh, otter pops for me. Um, you know, just like not rushing ahead. So it's like when that comes up, you take a step back. And that's what I did at Havelina because I was running around in the desert and it was really hot and I got a little sick and, you know, and then you start spiraling, you know, like yeah. if you let that spiral, like you can, but if that happens, it's just like figure out what the problem is. If I need to slow down, I slow down. Like I don't go up that very fast anyway. So <laughs> that's at least for me, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the issue of worrying about running too fast uphill. Mm. I become a very good uphill runner, you know, but I'm not, it's not like, like my, my thing. Right. Mm. And so I'm not worried about like pacing myself. When I get there, I'm like, time to walk. Yes. <laughs> it's a great walk break. It is such a nice walk break. I've done it so many times now that I'm like, all right, I'm going to walk. It's going to take me about this much time. Mm. And like comparing. And the thing is, is that the three runs that I've done in the past month there, none of them have been like, I can't wait for the canyons. They've all been like, had their own issues. Mm -hmm. And when I look at those splits, I'm like, if I go that slow and it felt like glacial at times, like that's still a very, like if you compare it to an inter-race split, mm -hmm. it's still very good. Nice. So that's kind of what I'm trying to remember is like, even when I'm going slow, that to have that perspective, like that there are different sections where like, if that's a slow section, I mean, I also like almost, I think I was like second on Strava for the, <laughs> to the river. Like EO and I tempoed the next day, like on, <laughs> on the training weekend, mm -hmm. we tempoed down to the river, just crushed it. And it's like, so I know you can run that pretty fast. I won't be running that fast. But. That'd probably be a good section for you to run past though. Yeah, and I have Larissa Danis as my pacer there. So it's possible we could set the course record there because <laughs> she's super, super fast on the downhill. Nice. Yeah. So you're not out to prove yourself to the community like you were in 2010. No. But you're fit. Yeah. You're acclimated. Yeah. What do you what's your goal? What are you what are you going for? Um I mean I would like to run as fast as I can. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real. Like it would be amazing if everything came together and I could crush it. Um I think it's going to be really hot, so I think the times are going to like it's really hard to be like I have a time goal because it doesn't it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like time goals are nothing. Um for me it's my goal is to run my race, um, to set myself up for, like what I did at Havelina is kind of like what I keep in mind is that like the last part of a race, especially on a course like this, like this is why I want to come back. Like what I did at Havelina, which was run the last 41, even faster than the guy who, the only guy who beat me and he almost broke men, or, men's course record. It's like, this course is conducive to that kind of running. So I just need to take care of myself through Forest Hill. And then I want to be in a position where I can do what I know my body's capable of in those last 38 miles. So maybe to paraphrase, to, to put yourself in a position to be proud of your last yeah. 38 miles. Yeah, I mean, I like I know how runnable that is. I really don't, like I want to be able to run it. Mm -hmm. And I have like the people to do it, like Larissa and then Chrissy, like I just, that, real, that idea really excites me. Um, so I just have to be really smart. And part of that is running my own race, um, which, you know, you talk about puppies and kittens and unicorns and all that <laughs> is it's going to take something in this race that I didn't have last time, which was like, you know, letting people go. Like, you know, they're in ultras, like a lot of times, like Havelina, I just ran by myself, right? Mm -hmm. It was mine to do what I did. And in this race, you have like, you're going to be seeing the next person. There's going to be people passing you. There's people having different races and we're all going to get there a different way. Mm -hmm. So it's just really focusing on doing it the way I have planned and not, you know, I think last time I just totally tried to run other people's races. Um, and then when I was, you know, not feeling good, then it just freaked me out. So, well, congratulations on the journey you've already taken. And Thank you. Best of luck on your journey on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>